All right, so we're gonna move right along with these videos and we're gonna start putting the kit together. So we're gonna start with the basics, tools, and getting your differential shimmed. So let's get to it. All right, guys. Now that you survived building your shocks and your differentials, you can just sit these guys off to the side. You'll need these in just a second, so don't take them too far. But since we got that stuff knocked out, let's just go ahead and take a minute and talk about, you know, building an RC car kit. Now, do you need to run out and buy really expensive tools? You know, no, you don't. Um, but you're not going to want to build your kit with Allen keys like this or something, something, you know, along that, along those lines. Now you don't have to get hobby tools. There's plenty of, you know, companies that make Allen bits and stuff like that. So for the longest time, I bought just a bunch of Allen bits that had a, a driver itself. And then... And then along the lines, I upgraded to a little kit like this. Um, these worked extremely well for me for a long period of time, but with like lower end tools, they'll kind of wear out and stuff. Uh, like as you can see with this guy right here, you know, you can turn, I'm holding the screw solid. So the screw's not turning, but there's that much play and, <laughs> and the driver, fitting inside the screw itself. So that's not good. That's going to lead to your stuff stripping out and you know that's you don't want that. But all right, this is a nice hobby grade tool. If you put it a very this is hoodie, it's you know I'm assuming you know up there with the best. So if you put this driver into the screw, you can there's like just a touch of play. Like it's barely moving compared to this one where it was like just walking all over the place so anyway that's just a long way of telling you um you know you definitely want some decent tools that are not going to strip out and round out all your freaking your your hardware and stuff so all right now that you have or now that you have a decent set of drivers um the next big tool you'll need whatever will be is a way to cut your plastic parts out from like the mold um you really just don't want to like break this stuff off because you end up with like a really ugly you know break so you need a pair of flush cuts you can manage you can manage to get by with a hobby knife um i actually just like to use a box cutter like this it's way easier to hold and the blades are easier to get and I don't know, it just seems to work better for me. Because like a little hobby knife, the blades are really, really flimsy and they tend to bend and follow as it's cutting. So, well the flush cuts, like if a part's rounded like this, I always like to just put the flush, to put them like right on the side of it and push it against the part before I cut the part loose. And you'll end up with a really nice cut. It won't be like anything really jagged or like hanging off or anything like that so that's kind of what you want to do do the same thing like i said this really isn't going to affect the performance if you get like a little rough snag or something you can just take your blade and clean it up a little bit and like i said you can also like always put for like these right here these hold your shock tower or hold your sway bar in to the front of the diff so I just always like, I'll put the cut end facing down. Just stupid little things like that to make your kit look a little better. In case like this guy, I'll always like cut it because these things are pretty, they're pretty, pretty gnarly. <laughs> so like the bigger stuff, it takes a lot of effort to cut through that. So I just always cut the diff, cut it free. And then like I said, you can use a knife and just kind of Just cut it 
and you'll end up with something better because sometimes flush cuts will actually do more damage than good so just be careful and don't cut yourself and just slowly work at the high spot Don't forget to give it one of them across the back to make sure it's not. And you just, I'm saying, you just want it to be nice. You don't want like no big, at least something like that sticking out of there. So, you know, same thing. Take your flesh cuts, snip it. If you have any rough, any little edge on it, just kind of clean it up. So these thicker parts, these thicker parts are a little, a little harder to manage just because the plastic's kind of, kind of tough. So just like that. That way you have a nice clean edge, nothing rough, or you haven't like nicked it or anything like that. So. And you gotta cut that out too, but it's the same process. You know, you can just take your blade and just put it against your table and force it down and cut it. Um, yeah, just wanna take your time and make sure when you're cutting out all your plastic parts, which there's a lot, that you're actually getting a clean cut and you're making it look the best you can, you know? You spend a lot of money on your kit, you want it to look really good. All right, and now that you have your part cut out, you know, I'm really bad about this one, so. But if you're new to building, you might want to stay to the instructions and not jump around. You know, the first tip I give you were like build your diff, build your shocks together, that's jumping around. Because I think the diffs, putting your diff together is the first step you do and your shocks are like one of the last. So. But outside of those, like just follow the instructions and just, you know, do step by step and don't skip around and stuff. Like I used to, I would just build my turnbuckles. Let me get to it. I would just build my turnbuckles and wouldn't adjust them until the end. And then I would do my adjustment and set up and all that stuff. But just go ahead and do it. Just go ahead and get you a set of calipers, which you'll probably need. But just get you a set of calipers. Um, I picked these up from Home Depot, I'm pretty sure. Yes, Home Depot. And just go ahead and do everything exactly the way the instructions tell you. And, you know, you can mess with your setup later and stuff like that. So, but yeah, just go ahead and build it the way that they want you to. Don't try to cheat the system and jump around. All right, now that you have all the parts cut out for the, the step that you're on, you can go ahead and start assembling everything. So with these uh, diff housings, I like to go ahead and just put one of the bearings on the gear and put the, the inside bearing in first. It'll help you guide the, uh, the front bearing, which is really the hard one or the outside bearing. So when you put this bad boy in there, like you're not going to be able to push it with your your hand. Just stand like that. What I always do is come over to like a table, which I can't do it on my mat, and just kind of like, we'll try. Might want to put something on your hand because this thing's pretty rough. And just push down on it like that, and it will pop into place. So it is definitely, it's definitely an aggressive fit. <laughs> so yeah and then go ahead and do the other one go ahead and just pop the inside one in your hand it's not that hard make sure you push it all the way in because if you don't it 
it might push in and then your lash will go weird or something like that. So we'll talk about gear lash in just a second. I said, if it's not want to go on there, don't force it. Last thing you want to do is get this thing stuck on there. You know, force it on there crooked. So get that thing lined up. It kind of works good if you put the palm of your hand like right there on the top of this and just kind of use your fingers on the front of it and push down. It should pop on there like that. You can give it a push, but it's probably not going to go nowhere. All right. So now that you got the bearings in there, we go back to our grease that, like I said, Kyosha provides. And I don't get a lot. I just get a little bit. Ooh, that's, that's a good bit. <laughs> and I just like to put a little bit on the gear itself. I don't know what I was doing right there. Pick that guy up. And just slide it through. Grab the other one. Get grease all the way on it. Slide it through. You can wipe your hands off. Wipe the end of the gear off. And boom. And for the axles, I actually end up using the little Allen key that Kyosho sends just because um, it's kind of like a one-time use thing for me. I can just use it, usually ends up bending it, and then I just throw it away. Next step, you want to get your get your axles ready. I like this little tube locked tight, it just makes life easier. So just put a little a little dab on there. That's actually a bit much. But you just really need a little bit. I honestly think these would stay without Loctite, but like I said, instructions tell you to do it. So just go ahead and throw a little Loctite on there. Try not to drop it. Get this guy. Just give it like a couple turns. You don't want to thread it all the way in there. Go ahead and hit the other one real quick. Get a little dab in there. And then same thing. Just get it started. Okay, and let me tell you guys, I used to make this mistake all the time when you're putting your drive shaft on your diff i used to like put this thing all the way down and i would like loosen it up and my goal was to have just a little bit of play in it so it's like slide in and out a little bit which you don't want at all you don't want to hold this thing and like you know really squeeze down on it but just put that thing all the way against it hold it like this so you got your finger in there on the gear and your finger on the back side of the axle or your drive shaft, whatever. Just hold it together. You don't have to put a lot of pressure. Turn it. Dang, butter fingers. But anyway, just a little bit of pressure. Once you get it tight, not tight, just kind of snug it. You want to make sure it doesn't move in and out like i said you don't want it to be on there crazy crazy tight and like because you don't want it like collapsing these bearings and causing them to pre-wear because they're running on the side of the race so now that you've checked it go ahead and really really ugly dug that thing on there you can't tell that but it's starting to twist but you want this thing should spin freely without feeling really gritty. If it's gritty and making a lot of noise, you probably have it too tight, but you don't want it, which this is, it's kind of weird. Like if you hold the drive shaft, you'll get a little slop in this joint. But if you hold the joint right there, you don't want any play. You know, you don't want this gear going in and out because that's gonna mess with the lash, your back lash. So now that you got the rear one done and set that to the side and go ahead and go to the front one. Slide that bad boy on there. Once again, just hold them together. A little bit of pressure. Check it. It's not moving. 
Make sure she's spinning good. And now you can give it the old, give her some ugga duggas. Really crank that sun gun down on there. Like I said, I don't think I would need Loctite. I put them on so tight, it's insane. Check it again. That is butter, which is what you want. Now that you got that done, you can move on to the next step. All right, now that you're ready to start putting your differentials together, you can start with either one, it don't matter. Um, this right here is the rear diff. If you lose track of them, you can just grab the diff and spin it like this, and it'll give you a good feel of which one is which. Because you know, your rear diff is gonna be the softest. So, this will kind of help you out if you, if you lost track of them. So, grab your shim. Slide it on the case side, the side of the case, not the gear side. So what you're trying to do is push this away from your gear in there so it gives it a little bit of, you know, a little bit of lash. So it's not like digging into each other. Oop, oop. Make sure you're doing the right one. This is the rear diff, so you need the longer drive shaft. <laughs> so make sure the shim goes down in there. Make sure everything's going in good. Go ahead and throw your front cover on, or the front of your case on. And you want to check the lash. Should have just a little bit of play. This is a little bit tighter than I would um than I would want. All you're doing by shimming this is getting your lash right. Because see, we put the shims on the case side, so it's pushing the whole diff to you know, the gear side, which is pushing it away from your other gear, which is giving you a little bit of lash. Which is still a little snug. So, I've had this issue before where they just seem like they're a little bit tight. But you can hear it, it's got, Got a little bit in there, but it's still a bit tight. So hopefully it'll loosen up as the car runs. So as it breaks in everything, hopefully it'll loosen up a little bit. So, but it should be okay. It's just a little tighter than I would normally like, but that's pretty good. I mean, as long as you got a little bit of play. So if you hold the front of it and there's like a little bit of play in it and it doesn't sound like the gears are like grinding together Let's do this real quick. I'll show you guys. So if we take the shims off and spin them around to the gear side and then put it back together. Go ahead and slide this guy back on. Now there's no play at all. Um, if you guys can hear that, even though it's on the opposite side, it doesn't really matter. But you hear how it's like it sounds, it's like really, like you can't really spin it. It's You don't want that. That is definitely too tight. So you want your gears. So if these are your gears, that's what's going on right now. They're like pushing in on each other and not really wanting to turn. So when you're shimming it away from each other, basically opening up and giving yourself that little bit of lash. So that's what you want. You want that little bit of lash. You don't want to be out here to where you got a lot and it's going to tear the teeth up. Same way, don't want it to be in here because it's going to be too tight. It's not going to roll good and it's going to tear your teeth up. So, so open everything back up. And for some, like I said, I've had uh, Kyosho cars before and like it seems like they'll be tight. So we'll go ahead and use two shims for now. And we'll put this back together the correct way but as it breaks in this will be this will be good matter of fact I'll show you guys my process um, once we run the car I go back and check everything and um, make sure everything is good so it's just a, still a little it's a little tight but you'll be okay gotta run her in I promise you once that electric power gets a hold of it it's gonna have some play in it <laughs> So it's not too bad. It's a little there, like I said, it's just it's a bit tight. So. 
But as you can see, it just spins way easier now. You don't have like that, that binding that we were getting earlier. So that's what you're looking for. All right, and also guys, like I said, the Kyosho instructions, which I think pretty much all instructions, I mean, they tell you, they either tell you the size or they'll tell you, you know, it'd be like a, I think they consider it like a one-to-one -one picture. So if you hold the screw of whatever part it's showing, it's usually that size. So it lets you know that that's the screws you need to put your tip together. So go ahead and get these bad boys in here. Go ahead and speed this up a little bit. We're on two, but like I said, I like to just hand tighten stuff. So I don't mess around and strip out a brand new diff, ha a diff casing, because that's it's not going to be good. So once you get it ran down pretty close, then you can just hand tighten it. Get that one snug. Then get this one all the way tight. Don't go crazy on these. Go back, finish that one up. Get it snug. Get this one all the way tight, and then go back and finish this one. Yep, sweet. All right, guys. I wanted to like stop right there. I'm going to continue making other videos after this, but I I thought just the basic information about the tools you need and getting your differentials shimmed correctly uh, would be a good place to, to make a little video and just stop right here. <laughs> yeah, so we'll move on with building the kit later, but like I said, I just wanted to make the video kind of shorter because an hour long video I think is a bit much. So we'll stop right here and we'll continue with the next video, putting your um, the car together and all that stuff and just continue the process of building the electric car, which, um, a little spoiler whatever show you guys right here so a little bit of a uh, video editing magic for you guys that's the car all assembled but yeah for now i'm gonna stop right here and we'll continue with the rest of the videos as it goes along putting the car together so <laughs> but all right guys hope you will stay tuned and check out the other videos and we'll eventually get this thing on the track and get out there and get some runtime very very soon but Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you, Donald. Stay away from this out of Jeez, I hate that turn. Hold on, <laughs> one more time. One more time. One clean left. Here we go, here we go.